one gallon, $115. Floor thing has really turned into a debacle. Progress! Hey friends, we're the Browns. Chad, Katie, Addison, and Kenya, Milo, and Charlie. We live to love an adventure. This is our story of leaving the norm behind to travel the United States full time, spreading love and encouraging others to do the same. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. So hit subscribe and join us for this incredible journey. So gearing up for the weekend to work on the bus, it's been a crazy week. I haven't been able to get anything done on it for a couple of reasons. One, we're still waiting on the floor sealer. Two, the weather. It's just been bitter cold at night after I get done working. This weekend's gonna be a big weekend. We're, we're planning to seal the floor, get the subfloor put in, and hopefully build some walls. So I'm just picking up a bunch of metal studs. And uh, my idea here is one thing that I've learned from watching other videos of people building buses and that kind of stuff is that there's a lot of concern with leakage uh, or moisture getting to the floor or to the subfloor. So a lot of people are laying wood two by four sleepers for the subfloor, which is basically the, the braces that go across the bus that the subfloor sits on. And the concern is if that's wood and it's porous, it can rot, right? If moisture gets in there, it can rot, regardless of whether you have a moisture barrier or not. So here's my idea. I've worked a little bit with metal studs before and so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create sleepers in the bus floor with these metal studs and, uh, and then put the subfloor on top of that. That way, if any moisture gets in under the floor and touches the sleepers, it's, it's no big deal really at all because they're metal. I just picked up a ton of these metal studs in the old trusty van here and uh, it's about time to get to work. This whole sealing the floor thing has really turned into a debacle. Not really, I'm being a little dramatic, but honestly, like I wanna make sure the floor gets sealed good enough so the bottom of the bus isn't gonna rust out <laughs> while we're driving down the freeway somewhere in America. So I've been doing a ton of research. We've bought a few different products that just ended up not being the right thing after I did more research after buying them. We ordered the Coraseal stuff on Amazon. We ended up having to scratch that, blah, blah, blah. Finally, I found this product it's still a special order product, so I had to order it through the paint the, the paint supply place locally here, but I found this. It's called Zero Rust, and um, it's expensive. Uh, $115 per gallon. <laughs> $115 per gallon, but it's the right stuff. I really believe this is it. Um, so I think it'll be perfect for coating the floor, we're gonna paint the floor today. Woo! All right, my friends, I finished painting the floor. Uh, supposedly, it's supposed to dry for 24 hours. Back of the bus almost seems dry already. It's pretty crazy. I used every last drop of that gallon. I am so thankful I don't have to buy any more. That stuff is more expensive than crack. Check it out, every last drop of that bucket. So I just realized, so it's one o'clock in the afternoon, I haven't eaten yet. I just realized that. So I'm gonna go eat some food, I'm gonna set the heater on um, and let it start working its magic on this floor. Hopefully by later this afternoon we can start laying some things out, maybe putting some floor sleepers in. That would be pretty cool. I'm gonna go get something to eat before I pass out. Super random side note is, that we have been trying to do better at knowing where our food comes from. Eat a little bit healthier. Obviously, I mean, I'm on keto. Uh, that's awesome. The rest of the family is not, but I just wanted to show you this. This is really cool. I don't know if everybody has something like this available, but we have a neighborhood farm and we get all our eggs from the neighborhood farm, Clifford Farm. And uh, that's gonna be something interesting on the road, trying to source some of our food from responsible places and finding good things, but I love it. I mean, Katie just brought home the groceries, so I wanted to show you that I love that we get our eggs from a farm, and look how colorful and beautiful they are. These seals are racing, and it's a seal race. It's a seal race? Yeah, so they Ooh. try to go really fast. 
Awesome. Cool. So you want me to play with you? Yeah. So you do what I do. All right. Oh. Is this our race? Yeah. This is how yeah. we race? So you have to go right here. Okay. Ready and go. How, oh, we go around? Woo! Woo! <laughs> Who's winning? Me! Why? Yes. Why? In front of you. You're in front of me? Yeah. But we're in a circle. Maybe I'm in front of you. No. Ah! I think I'm going faster. Katie's making us some delicious salads. Look at this thing. Mmm. Mixed greens, some feta cheese, avocado, nuts, apples. This is delicious. I could eat like this every day. What are we doing? Um, painting the floor. Painting the floor? Well, we painted the floor, right? Yeah. The floor is done painted, and now we're patching the holes. Now we're patching all these little holes that are in the floor where the seats were mounted and a couple of rust holes. We're gonna neutralize those, so we're filling the holes with gutter and flashing, so it'll bond to metal, extreme temperatures, and it can be applied wet. I mean, that doesn't really apply to us. Seal up the hole, just kind of get that stuff worked into the fibers of the mesh, and then, just so we're not walking all over wet caulk and making a mess and possibly pushing everything off, I'm just taking a piece of black duct tape, just putting it over. So hopefully you can see me, it's getting dark out. Beautiful night sky. It's pretty warm actually. Uh, it's a perfect night to be out doing this. So I'm basically putting together the sleepers of the floor. That means the beams that run the width of the bus. Um, and the subfloor is going to sit on top of that and the insulation is going to sit between them. So I'll show you what I mean. We're actually going to glue them down onto the floor. So I cut these still 2x4s to length, the, uh, the length of the width of the bus, which is 90 inches and a half. And now I'm taking these foot, one foot span um, track so that these still studs kind of sit down. When, they, when you do them vertical, you'll see later when I do my walls, but when you do them vertical, they sit down in these tracks and hold them into place. So what I'm doing is I'm taking one foot lengths of those and actually screwing them on to the stud. And then when they go into the bus, we'll put glue here, all along these, just to glue them down, and it'll sit like that. after laying some of these sleepers and I'm in here just checking things out see how everything went I'll show you kind of what we're what we're looking at here so I laid these slippers slip sleepers <laughs> slippers and we had to weight them down with buckets to get the glue to set so the glue set and then I I ran out of time last night couldn't get some of the more cut ones up down so we've got six sleepers down those other two by fours are just there just to distribute the weight with the buckets and stuff. So anyway, um, today we're gonna get the rest of these sleepers down. We're gonna get the floor insulated and probably subfloor down. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things real quick. Obviously we're starting to get a lot more of the floor joists or sleepers down, which is cool. We're almost to the front and we're also getting a bit of the insulation in. So I found inch and a half thick foam insulation that goes nicely right between the joists or the, or the sleepers and their exact same height, so everything works out. Then we did something interesting. I wanted to avoid putting screws in the, in the pan of the bus. The, the glue wasn't quite holding exactly the way we wanted it to, so we just made these quick little L brackets for the, for the metal floor joists. So those will hold them in place. We just cut them out of the metal studs and put two screws in and they hold them perfectly. So that's really nice too. Progress! So, 
it's getting a little bit dark. I'm not gonna be able to do much video. Sorry, the fan's going, heating the bus up because it's getting cold. But look at that. We have a floor. Beautiful. That was a lot of work. Took us most of the day, all the day, including grabbing supplies. But we had to figure out a few things that we thought were gonna work that didn't work. So we had to change our plans. I talked about those on video. And uh, yeah, this thing's looking awesome. Get some floor in, and the ceiling's getting closer. <laughs> That's one thing we're starting to notice is that this is closing in quite a bit. We've been looking for some things to take with us on the road that would be durable, entertaining, like things to have with us. And I found a company, thanks to my friend Josh, called Outdoor Ukulele. And so, I ordered a ukulele, they're composite ukuleles that are durable, waterproof, everything. You can take them anywhere, do anything with them, supposedly. And so, I bought one, and we got it. So we're gonna show you what it looks like as it comes out the box. They're a company out of Bend, Oregon, and I had an awesome conversation with them, just talking about ukuleles and life and our plans and stuff like that. They were awesome to work with. It takes a little while to get your ukulele because they're made to order. Ooh. That's nice. Very cool. Cool, so outdoor ukulele sticker. Just in case you need some basic chords. Which we do. Which we do. That's the other thing is I don't know how to play the ukulele at all. So I'm gonna learn how to play the ukulele. This is the brown tenor. Um, they have sopranos as well, and I think they have green and a bunch of other different colors, but I love the brown tenor. It's kind of like a see-through epoxy. There's your insignia inside there, that's awesome. But here's the bridge, it looks like the bridge is just formed in with it, it's all one piece, that's pretty cool. The strings go in, oh. What was that, Kenya? It was you wanted to be a part of the video? It was some rocks thrown on it, but... <laughs> Kenya, our tutor. <laughs> so there it is. Whoop. Outdoor ukulele. I'm gonna learn to play this thing. Me too. Before we leave, I want a few songs and I'll play for you. I'm sure it's not tuned, but we'll do a couple chords. Lots to learn. All right, so it's the morning after putting our floor in. So now is the fun part. We get to make some decisions about our floor plan. So we're gonna take this blue tape and we're just gonna start taping out some floor plans and see what we come up with. I think, I think a big part of this portion is just gonna be figuring it out as we go, but we wanna have some plan, some sort of plan this part's gonna be the most difficult, not the most difficult, but it's going to be difficult because of our decision-making abilities. We wanna make sure we get it right, or, or yeah. get it the best way that we can before we just start building it out and then have regrets later when we're living it. Okay, so we've been out here for a little while and we've taped out like three different designs. We've got some beds here to help us envision. We're talking about the bathroom and we're trying to preserve the garage space because the garage, I'm really excited about the garage. It's my garage slash office space. I wanted a separate space from the rest of the house to just be and work and Katie does really early morning work. So it'd be really good for her to be able to go back there and kind of have a sound barrier. And it was looking like, I mean, once as we mapped it out, we were getting a little too close to the front. So we're trying to figure out solutions and I think we just figured out a solution for the bathroom. Black space back there is the garage. This taped out space right here is our bed. It's a queen size bed. And this little side space would be more garage space. Here's the bathroom. Issue is the wheel well. The wheel well is preventing us from putting the shower right next to our bed. Because we wanted to have our bed the shower over here, toilet over here. We just found a bathtub that's 40 inches long, 10 inches deep, and 24 inches wide. And I think it will work here to actually 
build a box, set it on top of the wheel well. I mean, we'll, we'll be lacking a lot of head space here. That's, that's a given. I think we'll save a lot of space. Everybody takes a bath. Everybody takes a bath in a 10 inch bath. It's been a long day. Uh, we've literally been out here for hours just trying to figure out our floor plan. And uh, we, <laughs> we've got it mostly there. We're really puzzled about the front of the bus. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn you around and just show you what I mean. Maybe you guys can give us some suggestions because that would be awesome. We have the range and stove. I think we're gonna do a full uh, floor, uh, freestanding stove and range. So that will go there. A foot of countertop right there. And then the sink. And that's as far as we've gotten on this side because we still need to figure out our seating that will go over that wheel well and anything else that goes in between here. We're talking about like possibly an RV style dinette and then the countertop will go up against that dinette. I don't know. There's lots of options, but we're still trying to figure that out. Katie's doing a lot of research. Over here on this side in the kitchen, so there's the bunk again and then the refrigerator right next to the fridge, right next to the, the bunk bed. A couple feet of countertop and then a possible fold down table over here. We definitely want the wood burning stove over by on top of the wheel well over there. Um, but yeah, so these two spaces are still just kind of a mystery to us. We're trying to figure out what we want to do here. First day of learning the ukulele. Um, I play the guitar a little bit, not very much. Just, just enough to get by and sing some songs. So the mechanics of strumming and fingering and stuff like that is not a big deal for me. I'm, I'm just, it's more just memorizing chords and finger memorization and that kind of stuff. So I downloaded an app that's a ukulele teacher and it's actually really cool. It's very similar to the app that we let downloaded for the kids for piano. I did a couple lessons this morning, so first day, I don't know know any songs, but just getting some basic chords down, like an F. A minor. C. Just some simple chords. First day, not too bad, right? I'm loving the ukulele, the outdoor ukulele. It's super durable. The sound seems great. I like it. Anyway, I'm gonna show you some progress as I go along. I'm gonna, gonna be learning, taking lessons on that app, and I'll show you my progress, and I'll get a little uncomfortable. I'll sing some songs. I don't think I'm a very good singer, and I'm what I really struggle with, and I know this from playing guitar, is that I really struggle with strumming and singing at the same time. I, I For whatever reason, it's really difficult for my brain to do that, but I'm gonna try and I'll show you my progress. I think it'll be fun. Thanks so much for watching. Love, always adventure, often.